Welcome to the Dassault System 3D Experience Forum. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and we are live. I'm excited to go live once again today here at the Forum, and I'm even more excited about the guest that I am about to introduce. Today, we have Monica Mangini. Monica, Hi, folks. <laughs> how are you? How is the event going for you so far? It's very good, actually. It's energizing as usual. We have many customers, so we have many testimonials if we want the different experiences. And the forum is called 3D Experience, so actually it's all about sharing experiences. Yeah, it has been a great experience, and you can't minimize the experience of walking outside of the hotel and seeing the beautiful oceans and the sunrises and the beach, which sometimes you forget that when you're inside the hotel all day, but the experience has been good both in and out, but the forum has been incredible. So. You know, quickly just tell me about your role, because I want to make sure everybody out there knows about your role at Dissociate System. I'm uh, one of the executive vice president, uh, and I'm the person responsible for drafting the long term strategy of Dassault System. So I'm so called the chief strategy officer. Um, my job at the system is connecting the dots, be ensuring that what are the values that are needed from different industrial sector are distilled, if you want, in order to be defined as products. So my first job is bridging what is needed from the market with the R&D and that's for the development of the product. And then all the way through, if you want, the corporate planning of the company till the go to market and the marketing of the system. So strategy, marketing, go to market, business operations, finance. Got it. So you're doing just a couple of things. I'm, I'm a connector of the dots, as <laughs> simple as that. Connecting actually. the dots. Um, <laughs> So one of the things in just a little bit of time I've had and had to hear from you and hear about what you do, I, the, the platform is a passion to you, but really this evolution of the platform from B to C. So you have Amazon, you have Apple, you have Uber. And people have become really comfortable with the platform in their con, as consumers. Yeah. But in business, right, in terms of innovating your, your business and B to B, for instance, platforms have been much more disparate. The companies are piecing things together. And, and you believe it's it's there's an evolution taking place here. Um, so for B two B companies starting to think about platforms, what are some of the you know the myths and some of the things they should be considering as they look at how can they build platforms to drive their innovation strategy forward? Sure. Um, I think that indeed in, every, in our everyday life we do use a thousand of platform. I mean, even your device, your telephone, it is a platform if you wish. So there is an operating system that is opening up your application, whether it is for health or whether it is for music. So imagine that is exactly the same need that is for the, for an industrial job, and therefore any type of business needs, if you wanted to have a single device actually that operates or launch or powers a thousand of application that are business application. So that is a very single, uh, simple thinking if you want, uh, why platform has become so much important in the terminology of business managers. Because uh, as in our everyday life, we want to have uh, just a single place for, uh, from where to power everything that we need, they would like to have, if you want as well, inside the company, one simple thing so that can operate every single business processes of the company. So because of this need, uh, uh, back uh, five years ago, actually, we have transformed, uh, I would say, silos to point solution that the system was having into portfolio and something that is really connected one to each other. So again, I'm a connector of the dots. So my design of the platform, it was uh, all uh, brought by the need of having a continuity of action because in a business, if you want, uh, being a social structure, you need to get social. And therefore, marketeers must talk to sales, sales must talk to R&D, R&D must talk to finance. And this uh, digital thread wasn't there yet. So the platform was built actually to facilitate this from within a business unit. And this is what we call today the 3D experience platform because it is a 3D, that is the biggest of the legacy of uh, the so system and experience because experience are the new economic offering of today. We are no, no more buying products. We do all want experiences. You, you warm my heart when you say that. You know, when uh, Olivier Blanchard and I wrote our, our last book, uh, the subtitle was Digital Transformation in the Experience Economy. And we did a ton of research on how uh, experiences are kind of the highest on the value chain Absolutely. now and 
you know, whether it's the Disney or the Apple or Absolutely. these different companies, Uber, you know, Lyft, depending on your preference. But Absolutely. the point is, you know, people said, I want an experience. I don't want to have to swipe the credit card when I get out of the cab. I want my daughter to walk into the restaurant at the theme park and the princess knows yeah. that she's the favorite to, the, the, you know, and she gets that experience. And that's why I pay eight times more than a, a, an amusement park in my in my hometown. To, to you know, then, I mean, what's happening is this, is that if you wish, uh, you just mentioned Disney. I mean, Disney was the inventor, if you want, of the experience. And the experience uh, has, since then has polluted in a positive sense if you want every single industry. Back in my time in PNG, we were looking at Disney, how they, we, we were, they were creating experiences, and we reapplied, if you want, the best practices in order to transform commodities like detergent, if you want, in something that would have been the experience, if you want, of laundry. So if you look at today, this is polluting, again, beneficially, every single industrial sector. There is not even one of the industries that is not to in terms of experience, whether it is their patient care experience in life science, whether it is the, as I call it, the matching experience in automotive, because when, when you buy a car, you're really dating, yeah. if you want a brand, okay? Yes, so experiences are everywhere, and indeed are the new economic offering. So the 3D experience platform was really designed with this in mind, but we wanted to go further, if you want, and this is the reason why we started talking of adopting the platform business model to go back to platform. The GAFA, so the Google, Apple, Facebook and Amazon were the inventor, if you want, of this business model that consists in not manufacturing anything, if you want, uh, because that is the, the whole point, but actually creating an ecosystem of partners that manufacture things or services for you and then you trade and put in interaction, if you want, uh, uh, between those that are on the, on the demand side with the offer side. So the platform are there if you want to connect. To, to share people knowledge if you want and buy if you wish to buy or use the services that are, that are online. In the B2B, that is much less if you want of this mentality, despite instead in the B2C, so the business to consumer, we are using the platform every single day. So the 3D experience platform not only wants to operate a continuum with different business applications from inside the four walls of an enterprise, but wants to create this bridge towards the external ecosystem. Because today the supply chain is no more that that we were knowing 30 years ago. I need to create a car and therefore I choose four guys. Uh, each of them knows how to do a little piece of the engine and a little piece of the, uh, the window and a little piece and then we assemble everything. Today, if you want, the demand on the market requires a such a, of an elasticity, if you want, and therefore you need to dynamically connect with people that are experts, because we are in B2B for sure, but you want to really have an ecosystem and an online ecosystem to whom to reach to, bid for the best, if you want, uh, award someone with an order, if you want, and then receive if you, as Amazon delivery at home, or if you want in your factory, the piece that you have designed and uh, have requested. So. And you kind of came up with a new word for that, that you call it uh, value networks. You said supply chain yeah, and yeah, you heard yeah. value chain, but so, so value network is, if I'm hearing you, it's sort of, it, it's the more adaptable, more agile uh, way that you can pick, choose, partner accordingly to, to flow through your design and innovation process or, or explain that a little bit more. Actually, I do have a concept that the supply chain it is the physical description, if you want, of what it does a manufacturer from the buying of the raw material to whatever needs to go to, to add the parts, if you want, of the product that needs to be assembled, if I continue with the example of automotive, and it is just into the physical world. 30 years ago, when digitalization started at an industrial level, if you want, the value chain concept was invented, that is the parallelization of the physical process and the virtual process, so that virtually you can control what you are doing in the physical world. The next step, it is that of the physical and the virtual for sure are overlapping, and so the virtual can simulate and advance and predict how the physical world should do. So if you imagine a factory, the virtualization of the process can instruct every single machine on what needs to be done and then it passes into the physical world. That is fine, but it is a linear process. In today's economy, nothing is linear. 
because uh, when you want to have an experience uh, rather than the, the simple product that gets assembled, actually you get a lot of the data and information that are coming from everywhere. I mean, marketeers could stop at a certain point of the production because uh, it intervenes in the market if you want a competitor that just is destroying uh, your dream of glory because uh, he came first. And therefore, you need to stop and readjust. If you use the same mentality of before, you're not going to get on time, on budget, and win in the market. The value network, therefore, it is a concept where online supply chain can adapt as much as possible faster than whatever you can invent internally, because in the immediate need, you can reach out to an ecosystem that is listed in a platform, our platform, where you can find all the suppliers of whatever would be needed, from raw material to finished part, for example, but in the 3D way. So we are not producing the parts, we are getting our client in contact with those that have, if you want, the capabilities of producing, whether it is in 3D printing or in, in the regular manufacturing system. So the value network is the next and ultimate, I would think, level of the future supply chain. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Now, I want to talk about one more thing, and we only have a couple minutes because I've been informed, I guess you have a whole, a really full calendar, because I, I could stay and talk as long, you know, anyway. Um, I really, night, I'm enjoying actually, it, just, I'm enjoying just it. Just 11 in the morning or yeah, so. <laughs> so um, we're all gonna, you know, the, the event ends today. It's been a terrific event, and everybody's gonna head to the airport, and they're gonna fly on out of here. And a lot of us are gonna be flying on out of here on, on Boeing jets. In fact, I will be flying out on a 737-800. And you guys have had some pretty exciting news uh, expanding upon the partnership of Disto System and, and Boeing. Talk a little bit about um, you know, the strategic impl implications of this partnership and how this is maybe paving the way for additional platform and recognition of platforms in the, the business and innovation space. And yeah. I, this will be the last one, so I'm, I, I want to hear all about it. Then. And, and then okay, I'm, we're, I'm gonna not, get, we're, get, we're getting kicked out. Start, okay. We're going to get launched out of here. So. <laughs> I'm not going to start this since uh, 30 years ago, actually. Yeah, but okay, so you know, Boeing so. and the SOSI system have the strategic partnership since very long now. And uh, the very first project, uh, when it was uh, the only capabilities, if you want, of the software portfolio of the SOSI system, uh, was uh, this software that was capable of modeling, if you want, an engineered type of product. And uh, the project was called Digital mock-up so you make in 3d what the aircraft would be uh, time passed by if you want uh, more software were added uh, to the portfolio of the so system Boeing continued to be one of the biggest clients there was uh, anyhow a moment uh, two years ago where uh, they were reconsidering uh, again if you want uh, what to do next because uh, they were having plenty of point solution and plenty of customization of this point solution in order to connect all the data and all the bricks, if you want, that they were needing even more. The biggest challenge of uh, the aerospace and defense industry today is on time, on budget, and the rate to build. Because they are not into fast-moving consumer goods. They create one program every 10 years. So the majority of the time, they are not modeling an aircraft. They are creating an aircraft, OK? And therefore, it's the management need that is preponderant, if you want, bigger than just the modeling capabilities. We were on time, if you want, with the rendezvous of the industry because they opened up a mega RFI, a request for information, a request for product. The 3D experience platform was there with the full capability that are all connecting the dots, including the part of the rate to build and therefore providing a solution for operating the shop floor and the assembly line on time in order to provide every single airline who bought Boeing on time with the aircraft. And the user experience of the platform was really the, the one of the key criteria why Boeing actually transformed the entire legacy uh, software uh, uh, horizon that they were having in order to join the new 3D experience platform uh, every single portfolio that I've created in the last uh, seven, seven years. Wow, that's really, really exciting. Monica Mangini, thank you so much for spending a Thanks little time you, here, going live and sharing the stories with the audience and for having uh, you know, having me here at Disso System 3D Experience. It's been a really, really fun time. Well, so we like you. experience then, you know. Thank you so much. The experience <laughs> has been most enjoyable.